Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Mike and Joel back with you again for another edition of Growing in Grace. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us once again. Joel, good to be back with you and uh, looking forward to another interesting but simple discussion. <laughs> That's always good. I always enjoy these discussions. I love talking about this stuff, and I know you do too, Cap. And obviously, if a person is listening, something about either the title or our just great and wonderful, lovable personalities has got you uh, staying with us <laughs> as a listener. And we'll see what it is that, um, that really, you know, I believe that the Holy Spirit draws us to his love and to his grace. A lot of times people think that we need to seek out God and all these things. But I, I believe that he is a great initiator. He's the one that has lavished us with his love and grace. And he's so willing and, and desireful for us to, if desire desireful is even a word, but he d- desires for us to know his love and grace and to just have a heart that's receptive to it. So many people have a view of him as, as an angry God, as, uh, you know, I, I think some people picture Jesus as having this wagging finger. I'm watching you to see what you do, and as soon as you messed up, you know, he wants to, to punish us or hit us with a lightning bolt or whatever. But I think God is so contrary and different to all of that. And uh, we got to get this image of an angry and vengeful God out of our heads so that we can begin to rest in his love and grace. Yeah, grace will always recognize the goodness of God. And, um, you know, that's where we want to be. We want to be under that grace. Of course, we are, but uh, we want to experience it. And when we're experiencing true grace, it's an interactive thing. It's something that flows back and forth between us and God. And we, we begin to realize just how good and how great he really is and how loving he is, as you re- were referring to. Uh, and I, I like what you said there, Joel, because it's, 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 it's God who is the initiator. He's the one who has reached out to us. And I think much of the time in our, our Christian teaching, we often get the impression that it's up to us to reach out to him. Um, we simply respond to him reaching out to us. He did it, of course, through his son, Jesus Christ, at the cross. He still does it today in various forms. But he reaches out to us, and we receive this mm-hmm. goodness that we've been talking about here. We we accept it. We receive it. Why? Because he accepted us in Christ. We we just respond to it. We just we you know he's not exp- he's not sitting there with his arms crossed or like you said uh, wagging finger. You know, so some people will read the Bible and you'll we, get a lot of different people who get a lot of different pictures of Jesus in their mind as to what kind of personality. But if you're picturing Jesus walking around wagging his finger, you know who he was wagging it at? If anybody, it was the religious people <laughs> exactly. who were trying to live the law to the letter. That's who he was uh, wagging his finger at. If anybody, it was the people who thought they were uh, living this thing out pretty well and, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're of the self-righteous bunch. Right, yeah. As, you know, so if, if you're, you know, seeking after God, put that in quotations, let it be to find out more about his love and grace that he's already given you and, uh, and just, you know, seeking out how you can receive that into your life. And really, it's just, it's it's by faith, it's by belief, it's by trusting in what he has already done. And I think he just wants the world to know how much he loves them. Uh, that was one of the big things that came across in, in Jesus Christ on the cross. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son, and it was his great love. And so many people are looking for looking to God as the great punisher or the great disciplinarian. And yes, he disciplines his children, and that means he teaches. You know, he teaches us, and he teaches us about his love and his grace and his goodness and his kindness. And uh, he's he's a comforter, and, and he's a healer, and, and all of these good things. Not all these, 
you know, bad and horrible things that some people make them out to be. Well, we were talking last week a little bit about, you know, somebody had a question about how to deal with, you know, struggling with sin issues. And we talked a little bit about the spirit and the flesh. And I just wanted to, uh, one thing that I wanted to get in last week that I didn't was the idea that the Bible says we are no longer in the flesh. You see, we, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are made new. It's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. We still live in these bodies. And Paul, throughout his epistles, he talks about our bodies having sin that dwells inside, uh, sin that dwells in our members. He talks about the flesh in a different type of a way. In Galatians 5, he ta- he says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's this body that we still live in that sometimes has desires that are possibly good, but yet are the fleshly desires uh, that is, that our own attempts at trying to be good, and sometimes they appear, come across as evil, the evil things that people would do. The flesh, Paul says, lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. And I just wanted to say briefly that for a long time, I thought that there was going to come this time when I would finally tame the flesh. I would finally have the flesh under control, and I would always be trusting in God, and I would always be doing good, and and that when something came to my mind or a desire that wasn't godly came to my mind, it kind of took me by surprise. I thought, I've been doing so well. I've been, you know, focused on God and, and on doing good, and then all of a sudden, I mean, and it could be, I could be in a worship service and just praising and and loving God, then all of a sudden this this uh, thought would come into my mind. I'm like, where did that come from? And it could have been lived out through an action in one way or another. And those things used to take me by surprise. But one thing that I've come to realize is that as long as we're in these bodies, the flesh, that in that respect, will always be there. It's not like it's going to go away. It's not like there's going to come this great day when the flesh is just suddenly is gone, and we're not going to have to deal with it anymore. So it shouldn't take us by surprise. But the good news is that when the flesh appears, whether it's our own attempts at trying to do good, or whether it plays itself out through bad behavior or whatever, the good news is that that is not our concern. It's the Spirit's job to deal with all that stuff. And we can say, oh, you know what? That was kind of stupid. That was dumb. Holy Spirit. That's yours. And we can move on in the joy and the love of God. And we don't have to be concerned with trying to overcome the flesh, because we never could do it. Uh, We just got to hand it over to to God. Let him do it. Yeah, I mean, and that's just it. I mean, because, again, it's kind of like what we were talking about before on a previous podcast last week, I think. Um, We... When when we're when we're trying to tame it, as you were talking about, Joel, that that's when we start getting into trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, we we've been given a, a greater gift, um, freedom freedom from the law, and and been, have been brought into grace since we're no longer under law but under grace. Romans eight says that for for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So that's what we're under now is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Um, there was something called the law of sin and death, which we are no longer under. That brought condemnation. Paul told us specifically, there is now, now, therefore, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The fact is that even though the flesh doesn't go away, temptation doesn't go away, opportunity to uh, try to establish your own self-righteousness or the opportunity to do the wrong thing. Those things are, are, are still there. Um, sin, however, has been taken away in regards to our, our relationship to God. There's, mm-hmm. there's nothing that's going to ever get in the way of our relationship with God ever again. Nothing, ever. It, it has been taken away through the one perfect sacrifice of Christ. And, and Paul did say, 
that you are not in the flesh, speaking to believers, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So, well, we still have some of these things to, uh, I don't want to say deal with, but will we have these things to, um, to, to, to take on from time to time? Will, will they come knocking at our door? Yeah, probably. But keep in mind who you are in Christ. Uh, God has declared us to be uh, overcomers, and um, he has given us this power through grace and through love. This is how we relate to God now. This is how he relates to us, through love, uh, not through works anymore. And so we sometimes we get caught up with the, you know, the, the, the works of the flesh and the works of the Spirit, and uh, you, you are in the Spirit in Christ, and this, this is the law which we live under now. Yeah, and that's it. Where where you you know went with that is exactly where I wanted to go too, because I, I did want to make the point that these things, when they do pop up, shouldn't take us by surprise, and and we shouldn't feel like, oh man, I'm a bad Christian because I thought that thought or I did that deed, um, because that was just you know the flesh. We acted on something, uh, but really the core of who we are really is we are in the spirit. We're not trying to attain some sort of life in the Spirit. We're not trying to gain some place with Him. Uh, we're not trying to become more and more in the Spirit. We are in the Spirit. We are a new creation. And those things, when we act out on them, that's not who we are. And so we can just say, you know what? All right. Uh, I am a child of God. I am born again of incorruptible seed as I think uh, it was Peter that put it. And I am in Christ. Christ is in me. And I can continue on, even from this moment on, a second after I had that stupid thought or that uh, stupid action. Uh, I'm using the word stupid loosely, but whatever. And we can realize that the Spirit produces fruit, that is so contrary to all that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And how does this Holy Spirit do that? Is it when I try my hardest to get those things out? When I, oh, I gotta produce love and joy and peace? No. It's when I rest and trust and forget me trying um, to uh, do any of these things according to the flesh. It's all by his doing. Yeah, he, he is the producer of the fruit. We simply rest in him, and, and the, 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 we, we bear the fruit, but it doesn't come through our own efforts. And so this is all, what the good news is all about. It, it's about him working in and through us, not us trying to work to be accepted by him. Well, next week on Growing in Grace, we're going to talk that's some more about grace, but... How about this? The nature of grace, God acting freely. I mean, do we do anything to cause God's grace, or does he simply freely give it? That's what we're going to be talking about next week right here on Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.